I block my own energy so much um, with fear. And even times when I'm feeling desire, it's like I'm paralyzed or immobilized. And once my heart is open, then I can, once it's really open, then I can go with it. Mm -hmm. Do you know who Shirley Temple is? Yes, she's got blonde curly hair. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> seen the old Shirley Temple movies? Uh, is this your no. is this your man next to you? Yes. Okay, could you come here for a second? <coughs> Would you stand here with me for a second, Fraser? This is what we're gonna do. It's an ancient Tibetan exercise. Okay. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. Ready? I hope you know this one second. <laughs> On the good ship, lollipop, take a nice trip. To That's it. C continue until she breaks open. Keep going. Take a, I, I don't know the words, just hum it. <laughs> Now, now embrace it. <laughs> okay, now come back, come back. That's enough. Oh. That's enough. Okay, feel, do you feel a lot of fear in your body right now? No. Okay. So that's one, you know, don't pass this esoteric secret on to too many people. It's been protected for thousands of years. But all she needs is some form of, of energy shift. So humor is one possibility. Uh -huh. Another thing is to take her, like, incredibly seriously. So she starts to get a little frozen up, and you just go, like... <laughs> Are you afraid right now? No. Okay, so, so there's another one. You got the good chip lollipop technique. You got the taking it seriously technique. The other technique that you could use, I mean, there's a zillion. I'm just helping you, you know, because this, this is in your hands, obviously. You should trust you. Is mirror to her how she seems to you, which is always hilarious, you know. So these are several things you can do. But basically, it's she needs to be able to be afraid and happy in the midst of fear. But then, as she said, you need to connect with her deeply from your heart. That's what she wants mm -hmm. more than anything. So now that she's not afraid, look into her eyes for a moment. Maybe for 15 minutes a day, you just sit down and tell her how much you want to open her. Wow. And then maybe... <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> <laughs> but in return, of course... What do you feel would open him more than anything else for 15 minutes? <laughs> you could say it, we're all adults. It ain't Shirley Temple. <laughs> well, you know okay, so this is a dilemma. I, the, the image came up, of? but I don't want to say it because then I might have to do it. <laughs> Hey, it's, this is a pattern. That's how it goes. Yeah. If, if you would like him to, for 15 minutes, offer you okay. his verbal desire, you must offer him. So what, what's the image that came up? <laughs> oh, God. No, I don't want to say it to your back. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> uh, suck his dick for 15 minutes. That sounds like a good one. It's another ancient esoteric secret that you should do. Would you, would, if she gave you oral sex for 15 minutes, would that help your heart open? I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's the horrible practice that both of you don't want to do. You tell her how much you want to open her to God, she sucks your dick, and you're both going, oh, this is incredibly difficult. <laughs> Will you both commit to doing this for, say, one week? So that's a half an hour a day, one week. 15 minutes you praise her, how you want to open her. 15 minutes you offer him the best head. So, but it just can't be, you know, like, pleasurable oral sex. I mean, he could, he could hire somebody for that. What it needs is it's got to be oral sex that worships the... You, there's a part of him you worship, isn't there? Absolutely. Worship him through oral sex. Worship him through everything. But in this case, worship him sexually in a way that his heart just opens and he weeps from your depth of devotion. You weep from his depth of devotion. You can feel her, how much she worships you now, can you? I feel like I'm only at the beginning of the road, mm -hmm. and it feels really exciting mm -hmm. to continue going down this road. It's, it's interesting because it felt so timely for us, 
and it has proved in all our work with other people to be so timely for so many people. It's almost as if David and this teaching have come just at the right time when many of us were banging up against a threshold we didn't even know we were banging up against. For example, I knew exactly what I wanted from him, but I could only articulate it from a feminine kind of frustrated place. And That's the last thing to get me to respond positively. Yes. <laughs> So when I read the first book of David's Way of the Superior Man, I realized, oh my God, this guy is saying in men's language what I'm trying to get across. I wonder what's going to happen if I give Alan this book. And all the way through, it's been this amazing thing that a man can tell something to a man in a way he can hear it, and then I get the fruits of it. You know, but for me trying to correct or direct him, it just creates a bad energy. It just creates the magnets going the wrong way. So it's also a huge relief for me. I feel so much more relaxed in myself having this in right alignment. Which are you going to acquiesce to? The deepest possible yearning of your heart or a preference? Are you going to acquiesce to the deepest consciousness you can offer, the deepest truth you can offer, or are you going to put up a front to make people happy, to make yourself happy in a more superficial way? And the capacity to sustain that depth is what I have learned the most from in my practices and from my teachers and those who love me, is sustaining that depth of love and practice in the midst of, I think, some pretty difficult moments. <laughs>